I'm David Friedberg. I'm director of the Italian Academy, as some of you but not all of you know. It's a huge pleasure to have you here with us this afternoon at the Italian Academy. A special welcome to those who have traveled far, those who've traveled, shall we say, from Salento via, from, from Lecce via London, and others who have made these extraordinary connections at airports to be here. We should thank the heavens also for having suspended the um, anticipated snowstorm that was supposed to descend upon us yesterday evening, and it, obviously the good Lord spared uh, um, blocking us from coming, or blocking you from coming to today's conference. Um, <coughs> First of all, uh, I'm going to begin in Italian perché innanzitutto dobbiamo ringraziare i nostri sponsor, non solo per l'introduzione stamattina, ma ovviamente per l'appoggio finanziario che ha permesso questo convegno oggi, soprattutto l'autorità portuale di Ravenna, um, la Fondazione Flaminia e anche... Um, il Dipartimento di Beni Culturali dell'Università di Bologna. Siamo proprio grati a tutti questi sponsor che ci, ha, uh, ci hanno permesso di um, uh, creare questo bel convegno. E dicendo questo vorrei anche e soprattutto ringraziare Salvatore, professore Sal, uh, Salvatore Cosentino, I'm now thanking Salvatore Cosentino for his organization of the splendid event. All of you who are interested in the um, history of art, the history of culture, ancient history, technologies, and so on, should think about the Italian Academy and the kinds of fellowships which we offer here. And I say that not, as it were, to blow our own trumpets, because we have as many applications as we possibly can cope with, but because Salvatore Cosentino represents one of the finest examples I could imagine of the kinds of collaboration that we have with Italian scholarship and uh, Columbia University. Salvatore was a fellow of the Italian Academy a couple of years ago. He was a linchpin of our sem seminars. He showed um, exemplary prowess in his keeping everyone attentive to the documents. He made us aware of the economic substrate of the kinds of art and techniques which we're going to be studying this afternoon. So perhaps we could just interrupt this uh, little introduction of mine by giving Salvatore a special round of applause, Salvatore. Thank you. You know, all of us, I always think that all of us who have seen the mausoleum of Gala Placidia, the church of San Vitale, or the churches of San Vitale, Santa Apollinare uh, Nuovo, and above all those wonderful greeny, bluey mosaics of uh, San, San Apollinare in, in Classe, all of us, I think, should become students of Byzantine art just on the basis of the <laughs> mosaics of Ravenna. Who could resist? Every time I go back to Ravenna, I think to myself, what a wasted opportunity here. I've been mucking about with the Seicento when I could have been studying the mosaics um, that were produced by the great <coughs> Byzantine rulers of Ravenna. So um, it's especially an honor to have this event here today. You know that most of us who are organizing this conference felt that we were going to hold it in our rather charming library upstairs. I think some of you were there um, this morning. Um, but when we saw that we were going to have as many as you all are here, we moved proceedings to this theater. So all I can do is welcome you to the Academy, hope, you, hope that you will come back, and wish you all an extraordinarily exciting and fertile conference. I repeat my gratitude to those of you who've made the long journey to be here. There's an exceptionally large proportion of people who have come, overseas, come from overseas to be with us today. I've seen many new faces and some old friends. I'm very glad that this conference, I'm sort of, it's part of my duty to welcome you all, but I'm above all glad that the salutation, as it were, the valediction, I should say, will be given by the valedictory summary, I suppose, will be given not only by John Holden, who is more local, but my very old friend, um, Judith Heron. I think we first met, there's a slightly romantic element in this, I suppose, because we first met at a Byzantine, uh, the, the by Birmingham Byzantine Conference in 1976, I think it was. So um, it's a particularly touching 
moment that we should have a re-meeting on this occasion after so many years, in the course of which Byzantine studies has flourished as never before. So may this conference contribute to the ever greater flourishing of Byzantine um, studies in America, in Italy, in the rest of Europe. And with this, I welcome you here once again and give the floor to my colleague, Salvatore Cosentino. Thank you very much. Thank you, David, for your welcome and for your kind words toward my work. Um, I'm going to give a very essential introduction of the conference uh, of today. With the exception of Egypt, Ravenna and its interland are the areas that preserve the richest evidence among all centers of late antique and early medieval Mediterranean. I'm referring not only to monuments, architectonics elements, um, mosaics, luxury objects, manufactured goods, but also to written testimonies as papyri documents, inventories, inscriptions and chronicles. <clears throat> Since the first half of the 9th century people living in Ravenna as Agnellus, the first historian, in, historian of the city, were well aware of such richness. The idea of Ravenna as a living mining of glorious antiquities, coupled in the political medieval imagery with its perception as a residence of the last Roman emperors. From Charlemagne to the Ottonians and up to the Hohenstaufen, a subtle field rouge links our city to an idea of power and political legitimacy. Important antiquarian researches have been devoted to its historical tradition since the Renaissance until the beginning of the 18th century when the Benedictine Benedetto Bacchisio published the Editio Princeps of the Liber Pontificalis Sive Vitae Pontificum Romanorum by Andrea Agnellus from the Codex Estensis Latinus 371. <coughs> the scene board, their scene boarding there seems boring and unnecessary here to outline an appraisal of modern scholarship about late antique and Byzantine Ravenna. All the scholars, scholars in, this, in this room, furthermore, will be much better qualified than me in undertaking a similar task. It will suffice to remember that our city has been submitted to investigation under the point of view of a wide range of perspective, art history, history, archaeology, philology, conservation, and of course, history. Art history and archaeology, after the pioneering works of Corrado Ricci and uh, uh, Giuseppe Gerola, found a fundamental publica pu publication in the Hauptstadt des Spätantiken Abendlandes by Wilhelm Deichmann, Friedrich Wilhelm Deichmann. After it, several other disti dis distinguished scholars as Raffaella Faroli Campanati, Clementina Rizzardi, Irina Andrescu Tredgold have produced valuable contribution on urban to topography architecture, mosaics, luxury object, visual representations up to the recent monograph by Mariette Verhoeven on the early Christian monuments of Ravenna. Archaeology has enjoyed of important excavation during the 80s and 90s of the, of the last century by Maria Grazia Maioli, 
Soprintendenza dei Beni Archeologici dell'Emilia Romagna, and in the last decade by the activity promoted on the site of Classe, by the active cooperation between the University of Bologna and the Soprintendenza dei Beni Archeologici, um, with a joint excavation uh, mm, directed uh, by Andrea Ugenti and uh, uh, Maria Grazia Maioli. Between 1955 and, and 1982, a paleographic coming from Sweden, Jan Olof Cheder, uh, was able to decipher more than 50 papyri, more than 50 non-literary papyri, uh, which originally have pertained to the archive of the Church of Ravenna. As Cheder edition was ameliorative with respect to the 17th century edition by Marini, the same can be said for the edition of the so-called Codex Pavarus, uh, a collection of amphitheotic deeds ranging from the 7th to the 10th century, provided in the Codex Bavarus, uh, the edition of the Codex Bavarus, provided in 1985 by Giuseppe Rabotti, when compared this edition with that published in 1983 by Baldetti and Polderari. <coughs> Has history between 1969 and 1991, Ravenna and the Exarchate have been investigated as a regional society of the Byzantine Empire in important monographs or edit edited books as those by Andre Giu, Tom Brown, Oleg Borodin, and eh, um, Antonio Carile. In 2010, Deborah Delianis, after having produced a new good edition of the, leader pontifica of the Liber Pontificalis by Agnellus in the Latin series of the Corpus uh, Christianorum, wrote an up-to-date, a very useful scholarly vademecum on Ravenna in late antiquity. This brief sketch of historiography is simply to say that it would be pretentious to organize a conference on late antique and Byzantine Ravenna while proclaiming, yes, this is a new and innovative uh, perspective. It's almost impossible. More modestly, reader, it's possible to conceive a workshop with the purpose of discussing new data and new methods of investigation on the history of Ravenna under the period in question. This is in these last two decades, in fact, a number of rescue excavation as well as, as well as intensive works on classe have put to light new pieces of evidence which have enormously improved the framework of our knowledge. Today, we know much more better not only the most famous monumenta et documenta, of Ravenna, but the minute objects of its cultural legacy. Our understanding of the social and cultural character of the post-Roman Mediterranean is changed as well, showing a degree of integration among, among, um, among different uh, Re, uh, different um, provincial societies and um, economic dynamism, which was absolutely, absolutely unthinkable at the time of Wilhelm Deichmann. The approach proposed in this conference is neither that of coping with craftsmanship as a wall of manufactured goods nor that of studying single items of it, as precious as they may be. Rather, the focus should be on taste 
on patronage and on economic structures that featured the existence of an artisanal production in late antique and early Byzantine Ravenna. In other words, what should be the key interest of this meeting is how the system worked. This question is particularly meaningful for the current status of research on Ravenna. We know today a great deal of evidence about its material culture as well as its prestigious buildings. But the operating principle of the Ravenate economy and its interplay with Italy and the Mediterranean are still unclear and patchy. I hope that this conference might offer some useful insight in this direction. Thank you.